Welcome back everybody. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over how to get started in creating widgets and dashboards with Streamlit. If you would like more information on Streamlit, you can go to the Python package index and do a search for Streamlit. Click on the home page here. And then for the documentation, you can click right here. Before we get started, let's go over a few notes. To create your Streamlit code, create a Python file and make sure there's no spaces in the name. You can use an IDE or editor of your choice. Once your Python file is created with the Streamlit code, open up Terminal or the command prompt and change the directory to the file location. Then we can run the file using Streamlit run with the Python file name and the extension. You can also run Streamlit files from GitHub. To rerun the Streamlit code and update the app, you can click the rerun button or you can make it continuously update with always rerun. And we will go over that in just a second. Once you have run your code and if you want to stop the app, you can use Control Z or Control C in terminal or the command prompt. If you will be using large datasets, check out the Streamlit documentation for more information on cache. If you are using Windows and you're having any issues, follow these instructions here. For our first example, we are going to use Atom, and then for the rest of the examples, we're going to come back to Jupyter Lab. However, for the most part, you should be able to use the IDE or text editor of your choice. To import Streamlit, we use import Streamlit as st. To create our Hello World app, we use st.write, and inside the round brackets, we put Hello World. We have saved this as Python Streamlit Hello World.py. To run this, we're going to use Streamlit Run with our Python file.py. So now we need to open up Terminal or the Command Prompt. The file is on the desktop, so we need to change the directory to the desktop. Now we can put in Streamlit and run with the file name. And here we have our Streamlit app. If you would like to use JupyterLab to create a Python file, you can create a text file, and then you can rename the file with a Python extension. Okay, so here we have several examples. Let's go ahead and run the code to create the Streamlit app. So here we have a launcher. And then we're going to go to Terminal. To open a new launcher, you can go here. And we want to run this file here. And since the file is on the desktop, we have to make sure that we change the directory to the desktop. For the imports, we have imported these modules or packages. To create a title that looks like this, we can use streamlit.title. To create text, we can use streamlit.text. For our subtitle, we use this code. Here we have two examples of how to display a data frame. 
using streamlit.write and streamlit.dataframe. And we can see those data frames displayed here. To display a table, we can use streamlit.table. Here we have two examples of line charts. For this first line chart, we use streamlit.linechart here. For the second line chart, we use matplotlib. And here we have a bar chart. To create the bar chart, we use this code here. Here we have an example of a scatter plot. And for the scatter plot, we use streamlit dot altair chart. Here we have an example of a map where we have plotted some locations. To create the map, we use streamlit dot map. And then we put in the locations. Here we have an example of a slider widget. To create the slider, we use streamlit.slider. Here. Then we use streamlit.write. And we put the slider inside the round brackets. For this example, the output will be the value squared. So we use the slider value times the slider value. If you want to update your code, go ahead and make the updates. And then save the file. And then here you can choose rerun or always rerun. Next, here we have an example using checkboxes. And using the checkboxes, we can add different layers to the map. To create the map, we use this code here with streamlit.checkbox. Next, here we have an example using a select box. To create the select box, we use Streamlit. And for this example, we want the select box in the sidebar, so we use sidebar. And then we use dot select box. And here we have our select box. Next, let's go over an example of using text input with a button. So here we have our text input, and here we have our button. And here we have our output. To create the input, we use streamlit.text input. To create the button, we use streamlit.button. Here we have an example of radio buttons. And to use radio buttons, we can use streamlit.radio. Here we have an example using multi select. To create the multi select, we use streamlit.multi select. And here we have an example using dates. And for the dates, we can use streamlit.date input. And for the last example, for the widgets, we have a color picker. 
For the color picker, we use this code here. In this example, we want to use some cars data to create a scatter plot with different measures with a regression line. And then we want to predict the miles per gallon based on the weight of the vehicle. And then we want to create box plots for the different measures and overlay swarm plots. Okay, so based on this scatter plot, let's try to predict the miles per gallon based on 3,000 pounds. And the prediction is around 23 miles per gallon. If we look at the scatter plot and then we go to the regression line, we can see that it's pretty close to the 23 miles per gallon. And using the radio buttons, we can create different box plots for the different measures. And finally, we can overlay this warm plot. For the imports, we use these modules or packages. For the cars data, we use the cars data set from the Vega data sets. For the scatter plot here, we use this code. For the prediction model, we use this code. And for the box plots with the radio buttons, we use this code. That's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.